Welcome back to another episode of the Godly Young Men Podcast. We are rolling right along, episode 63. Uh, weather's getting warmer, is getting more and more beautiful outside. You can see we got the beautiful sunshine behind us. Uh, Joe and I, as much as we love doing these, we would love to be on the golf course right now. Indeed. Um, Indeed. Has not happened in a while. Uh, and, you know, Soon. The golf course is probably thanking us for that with yeah. how much we're chasing <laughs> exactly. golf balls in the woods and stuff. But um, anyway, we have got, a, I think, a very needed episode today, one that, you know, as we're thinking about episodes to do and kind of brainstorm, okay, what have we not done? What are some things that, that we really need to do that, that maybe we hit on early on, but we haven't done in a while? As we were going back through kind of our episode list, I was personally kind of shocked that we have not done an episode really on this yet. We did an episode, I think it was episode four, maybe three, then maybe three or four, somewhere in the first five episodes of how to study your Bible. Uh, if you haven't watched it, I would encourage you or listen, I encourage you to go back and do that. We feel like it's very, always very important to know as a godly young man how to study your Bible. But what we're talking about today is just kind of generically spending time with God, less from a Bible study perspective and more just from a setting time aside for God, for prayer, maybe just for Bible reading, for meditation, just making making time in your schedule for God. And again, I was kind of shocked that we had an episode on this. We're not talking about too- setting time aside for church. We're not really talking about even Bible study, as important as that is. We're talking about just more so communication with God, relate, developing your relationship with God. And so that's what we want to devote this episode to, because as I was thinking about it, I was thinking how many young men, 15 to 25 is obviously kind of the demographic we aim at, how many of those age of that age young men these days actually have a habit of spending time with God day to day, week to week? Most young men don't, Probably not is what I would say. I know yeah. I struggle with that when I was... 17, 18, 19, and so it's something I'm still desperately trying to work on, and so we wanted to devote this episode to it because one thing you will learn, especially as a guy, as a young man, as you're pursuing career, college, whatever, you know, even high school right now, whatever state you're in, your time evaporates so quickly. Yes, it like it, just, it, go, it goes like this, and it's one of those I put on the outline. It's like money. If you don't have a plan for it, it goes away. It evaporates even you faster. You will lose it, yeah. It evaporates even faster. Like if you don't have a plan for how you're going to spend your money, your money will spend will spend somehow. Like yeah. it, it will just evaporate. Same thing with your time. If you yeah. don't have a plan for the way you're going to use your time, it just evaporates. You just end up scrolling YouTube for hours or, you know, just not doing anything productive for hours on end. And so we want to talk about spending time with God yeah. for this episode and kind of how you have to plan for that. So yeah, when it comes to like how do you set time aside for God, I think there's a few things that you need to have in place. First is intentionality. You have to be intentional about this because to your point, man, it's it's gone. You look down and it's like, whoa, man, it's been three hours type of thing. Early in the mornings when you go to set aside time, like you're scrolling Twitter or Facebook or probably just trying Facebook, to wake up. Yeah. You're just trying to wake up. Yeah, whatever it is. You know, you're checking notifications from the day before and boom, next thing you know, wow, I got to get to school. I got to go to work. Whatever it is, you have to be intentional and plan ahead of time the time that you plan to spend with God. Yeah. Like that really is the key. That I would say the first key to this in terms of how to set time aside for God, be intentional about it. Look to the future and go, okay, I know that I'm going to have this time here and I'm going to be very intentional in terms of, I'm actually going to put my phone out of the room in the morning. So I'm not tempted to just doom scroll first thing as, as soon as I get up, I'm going to have my alarm clock. I'm going to get up and I'm going to get on my knees immediately. Or if that's very difficult, um, you know, praying from, praying from your knees first thing in the morning, case you fall asleep, whatever it is. I'm going to have the coffee setting out. I'm going to leave the phone in the room. This is intentionality. You're looking ahead saying, I very intentionally want to spend time with God. That's an assumption for us as godly young men. That's, you know, so you may not want to spend time with God. That's not really what this is for. We hope that is the case. If If you don't examine yourself and say, why am I not being intentional about this? Why don't I want to spend more time with God? And maybe look through that. But first things first, I'd say intentionality. And I would say this is the first step that is often missed is right. like, there's just there's no planning. There's just no intention behind it. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, I need to get around to that. I really need to get around to. If I got time, to, I got time. Yeah, right, sure. exactly. And of course, as one of my mottos, if you don't make time and set aside time for something, it will not get done. Right. And so I think intentionality is huge. But the net, you know, is continuing on as far as like, okay, how do I set time aside for God? One aspect is intentionality. Another one would be just kind of a the the, the concept of priorities. What do you want to do first thing in the morning? What do you want to do the first thing that your responsibilities are done? There's a lot of guys that they get through with the work day, maybe at college, get through with their schoolwork, whatever. Finally, I can play video games. Yep. Finally, I can go catch up on my Netflix show. Maybe it's yep. maybe you know less harmful. Finally, I can go play basketball. Finally, I can go outside and you know do whatever activities that are you know nothing wrong in and of themselves. But those things are what get prioritized. Spending time with God does not. And so, how do you set aside time for God? 
from a simple priority standpoint, maybe don't pick up the the Fortnite controller until you spent time with God. Yeah. Doesn't mean don't pick it up at all, but spend time with God first. Maybe before you click play next on Netflix, you're spending time with God before you go pick up the basketball, before you go hit the gym. Obviously, we think that's important. You know, it's not always about activities that aren't good. It's about what are you prioritizing? What are you making time for? Somehow we always seem to make time for the entertaining things. Yeah. We always seem to make time for the stuff that we really want to do, hanging out with friends or, uh, again, watching a movie, watching a TV show, whatever. You have to be intentional with the the, the way that, or the time that you're setting aside. Maybe you make a, make a commitment to yourself. I'm not going to turn YouTube on until I've spent my time with God. I am not going yep. to hit the gym. Again, all these things. It's about priorities. Jerry Seinfeld has a joke about nighttime guy, you know, versus morning guy and daytime guy and how nighttime guy is kind of the enemy of the other two because he's the one that stays up till midnight type of thing. That's for morning guy to worry about. I'm not worried about morning guy. And so he'll stay up till midnight and then morning guy is the one that's got to get out of bed and he's super tired or he oversleeps and then, you know, he's, he's got the joke about him oversleeping and daytime guy loses his job and, and, and such. Um, but there is that concept of like part of the priorities is we prioritize sleep, right? Well, yeah, if you're going to bed at midnight every night because you're binging Netflix, because you're playing Fortnite, whatever it is, and then the next morning when you should be up and giving that time to God before you start your day, well, priorities, man, you know, I got to get some sleep. No, what you need to do is go to bed earlier so yep, you can get up earlier and then pray to God. So priorities do matter, and it's just a reframing of your mind to say, where is all my time going? You have to be aware of your time Go. Okay, well, I'm trying to get eight hours of sleep, but if I'm going to bed at midnight or one and I'm getting eight hours of sleep, I'm getting up at 9 a.m. Well, now the day is behind me, so maybe we need to back that up and figure out why am I losing so much time in that uh, at, at nighttime. Um, but the third thing is in terms of how you set aside time for God. So we got intentionality, we got priorities. Third thing is consistency, and this one smacks me upside the head because it's very, very <laughs> difficult to stay consistent in these things. I'll get up at five for a week and then something happens or, you know, my kids are up late one night or whatever. And so I don't end up waking up at five. whatever it is. Consistency sometimes can kill me. This is the biggest issue for me. I don't know for you on this in terms of setting aside time for God, but this is something you cannot be sporadic about. If you're going to make time for God, Make time for God and yep. make it consistent because if it's a sporadic, well, I'll give him some time. That's God. That's giving God the dregs. What does David say? I'm not going to give it God. I, I won't give to God that which costs me nothing, I think is how he says it. We very much do that. It's like, well, if we have any downtime, any time where we're not, we've already checked all our social media. We've already played our video games. We've already gotten our sleep. We've already talked to our girlfriend on the phone, whatever it is. Oh, I got some time left? Wow. Sweet. Yeah, yeah exactly. Seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, read my Bible real fast. That's giving God the dregs. We have to prioritize God, but we also need to be consistent in setting aside time, saying this time every day, and that's going to be the best way to get in your alone time. It's the classic either do it or don't. Right. Uh, there, there's a famous, uh, I've heard, I, I have not seen the movie, but apparently it's a quote from the movie where it's like, either do it or don't, but I got places to be. Like, make up your mind on this. And that's something that drives me nuts about it is like the inconsistency of, yeah, I'll, I'll do it sometimes. I don't really have time for this. I'm like, I'll do it today. I mean, you know, be consistent. You cannot be sporadic about it because if you continue to let yourself be, just the same with anything, if you continue to let yourself be sporadic about it, you'll never see the results that you want to see. Uh, going to the gym, eating well. If you're really sporadic with eating well, like, yeah, yeah, I ate really well like three days out of last week and then the rest of it all went to, you know, it just did terrible, then you're not going to see the results you want right. to see. Same thing with God. If you want to deepen your relationship with God and develop your relationship with God and really just get into the habit of making sure you set time aside for God, if you're inconsistent with it, it's not going to you're never going to see the results you want to see. You're never going to be disciplined enough to make it happen. And so kind of these three elements, did you have something to add to that? No, I was just going to I was going to say. So if you are intentional, if you have prioritized, if you are consistent in setting aside time for God, then what do we do? I guess. And this is going to usher in. I think we're exactly where you were going is what I was going to say is like what do we do with our alone time with God? But you have to have these three elements first, in my opinion. Again, Correct. intentionality so often gets skipped. Priorities yep. are all out of whack, as Joe said. Like, man, I just really got to prioritize work in my or uh, sleep in my job. Well, then maybe you should do something else at night. Like, right, <laughs> exactly. So you already said all those things, but I think those three things as the cornerstone: intentionality, priorities, and then consistency is really going to set us up for okay. Now, how do or what do we do specifically? Yeah. Right. Which a lot of preachers are going to hear. Well, pray and read. Pray and study, right? You'll you'll hear that a lot, and that's kind of a cliche thing, but we don't want it to be cliche because those are very, very important. This is how we work on our relationship with the Almighty God. Do not take these things lightly and say, well, you know, I understand I'm supposed to. The mere fact that we can come before God in prayer, the Almighty before God in prayer, 
is a blessing that is mind blowing. I mean, you read can't even he, fathom it. Yeah, yeah. You read Hebrews four, and it's like we can approach God confidently before when. Think about the average Israelite standing outside the camp. Like, they don't have a chance of getting anywhere close to God. They can't go into the, the holy place. They certainly can't go into the holy of holies. One guy could do that. Now we get to walk into the holy of holies, basically, and mm-hmm. converse with the Almighty God at any time. That's mind-blowing. So do not take this lightly as we get into prayer, but I want you to get into this idea of communication with God. When we do have our own, uh, our, our you know, we've set aside our alone time, our own time with God, away from all the distractions, away from the phone, away from people, away from everything else, and we've really been intentional, we prioritize this time, we're consistently getting into it, prayer, I think, comes first. Get us into that Well, a you bit. have to think about why it's important, and it's basic common sense when it comes to communication. Think about everybody in life that you're close to. You probably communicate with them a good bit. You know, text a bunch, talk on the phone, yeah. see them at school, see them at church, whatever, talk a good bit. Think about all the people in your life that you're not all that close to. Maybe you want to be close to, but you're not. Probably don't talk to them all that much. Mm. It's base. It's again. It's just common sense. The more you communicate with somebody, probably the better relationship you're go- you're going to have um, with your wife, with with really good friends, with your church family, whatever it is. The more you communicate, the better your relationship. If you're not communicating with God, how good do you think your relationship with Him is going to be? It's going to be awful if, if if you're not communicating with Him at all. Right. And again, as I think about how many 17, 16, 17, 18 year olds, their prayers consist of "Thank you for this day," "Thank you for this food," in "Jesus name, Amen." Yikes! That's a yep. rough relationship. If that's all yep. your communication is, is mealtime prayers, and you know that's basically it. And so I'm, I'm challenging. We are challenging, godly young men. Step it up with your prayer life, man. Like this, this is such an important element of your communication with the Almighty God. If you want to have a strong relationship with Him, which if you're watching this video, then hopefully you do. You have got to make sure you are communicating with him on a regular basis. Again, back to the consistency point. Not sporadically, not just whenever you get time or whenever you feel like it. Consistently, because if you don't communicate with him, just like when you get married, if you're not communicating with your spouse, your marriage will either fail or be miserable. Your relationship with God will will, will fail almost certainly if you're not communicating with him. That's such a good point. And you got to get past the weird awkwardness of it especially early on when you aren't used to communicating with God that much, it can feel very forced. It can feel very weird. It can feel awkward just to like, I'm supposed to say what to God in this situation? Like, I know I'm supposed to pray and thank him for certain things. So early on, your prayers may be all Thanksgiving. I'm thanking him for this, 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 this. I don't know that I want to ask him for things or it's very generic things. We're not really praying big prayers. We're not praying like these big prayers of faith type of thing. That all comes in time. So give yourself some grace, but you have to be willing to push through the awkwardness, the weirdness, the yep. discomfort, I suppose, of praying some longer prayers, getting down on your knees. You go, man, this just feels kind of weird. Like maybe you're not used to praying on your knees at night uh, or in the morning or whenever it may be. Push past that and get to the point where it's like, I'm really getting used to being in this rhythm of waking up, getting on my knees first thing in the morning and praying to God and pray about all sorts of stuff. We're going to get into you know some helpful tips here, but Before we get to the tips, it's really important to understand the power of prayer, the power of being able to bring us to God. Yes, it's it's bringing our concerns, it's bringing our petitions, things like that, but we're bringing us to God. We are allowing ourselves to be known by the Almighty. Of course, He already knows us, but it's more for our psychological, you know, and, and, and spiritual position of like, I'm allowing myself to be known to God. I'm giving Him everything, all my wants, all my desires, all my fears, all my dreams. I'm turning it over to Him and allowing Him to guide my life. There's so much power in this, and you see this throughout Scripture. You don't have to be Elijah or Jesus or somebody else to to have your prayers answered. God answers the prayers of even the smaller men, you know, throughout Scripture. And, and of course, the effective prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much, right? But God answers a lot of prayers, and we see the power throughout Scripture. It's important to remember that. I think a lot of, especially young men in the church, can, you know, hear that and go, Oh, yeah, I know prayer is powerful, power prayer, I know all that stuff. You can literally change what happens in this world or to yourself based on your prayer life yep. think about that for just a second this is not a this is not a podcast about the providence of god or we're not gonna get into all that but if you truly believe james 5 about the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availing much then you have to believe and you should believe god listens to your prayers and it can ultimately change the outcome of something like that's right otherwise again if, if you're somebody's like man i don't really think that's the case what's the point of prayer why are you even bothering why, why would you even bother praying if it's all set in motion and so that's what I mean when we're talking about the power of prayer is like you have the ability to change that. It doesn't mean it's always going to happen. It doesn't mean you're always going to get the the job promotion or you're going to find the right girl or all these things. But the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availing much means 
your prayer does have some sway over what happens, which is just crazy to think about. Mind boggling, mind boggling to think about, but that's what I mean when I'm referring to the power of prayer there. But Joe, let's get into some helpful tips and advice yep. for prayer. Um, and these are just things that have helped us along the way. Um, a lot of these I put down, if you've got some to add, Joe, please feel free. Um, but for me, something that helps me is talking out loud does not really help with the weirdness and awkwardness of it. But I find that when I'm just saying my prayer inside my head, it is so much, you know, so much easier for my mind to go to, man, who did I pick in that March Madness game? Who did I, uh, you know, how's my fantasy team looking? Oh man, I got that big deadline tomorrow. I got to prepare for that meeting, man. You know, it was so fun with the kids today, man. What are we going to eat for breakfast in the morning? Your mind's all over the place yep. when, when you're not thinking out or when you're not saying the words out loud and you're just mentally in your head kind of saying a prayer, it is so much easier for your brain to rabbit chase. And again, maybe if no you're doubt. in bed for you to fall asleep and you're just not, there's no thinking behind it. There's not a lot of mental engagement going on. And so therefore, once again, your brain goes all over the place. And so a helpful tip that I would have piece of advice is pray your prayers out loud. And if you're like, man, there's people around, go somewhere where they're not do it in your car on your drive or go outside where nobody can hear you. Like I get not wanting to do it where people can hear you, but pray out loud would be my first tip. Yeah. And I think that actually goes along with the second one in terms of being alone, I would say start your morning with it. I love that you put it on here. I'm very much in agreement of that. Start your morning with prayer. Um, you actually just preached a great sermon on this. And the idea is you start your morning off communing with God, but you're also, you're maybe sacrificing a little bit of sleep. So you've already started your day sacrificing something for God, which I think is important. And you started your day communing with him and getting in a right relationship with God. The importance of getting up in the morning, and, and there's so many, you had pointed this out in, in your sermon and in a class after, like, there's so many verses in scripture about his mercies are new every morning, mm -hmm. right? You see the psalmist talk about the morning. In the morning time, these things happen. I will seek you in the morning. I will yeah. seek you in the morning, right? Uh, and we sing that song to go along with the psalm. So the morning time is a powerful time to be able to get up. Birds are chirping. Hopefully it's nice outside, especially summertime as we're, we're entering into spring and summer. I would encourage you to get up in the morning. I would encourage you as the days get longer to maybe just... I would say get up with the sunrise, watch the sunrise, let that put you in a frame of mind of like, we serve an amazing, awesome God. And the best prayers, some of the best prayers I've ever had are me sitting at my kitchen table. I got some, you know, I got my coffee in the morning. I'm seeing the sunrise. I got my, which we're about to get into. I'll let you, I'll get into this one. I'll let you get in the last one. Yeah, yeah. I want um, you to get in the next one for sure. Which is keeping a list. And I got my list in front of me because I do have a list. Some Maybe it's the bulletin. Maybe you added the bulletin, church bulletin, whatever it is. But I have a list. When that's in front of me, Boom. I get up. I'm it's it's early. I am alone in that moment. Maybe my my wife is there. She's saying her own prayers. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to watch the sunrise, drink my coffee, and then say a deep prayer to God while I'm there. The posture is correct. I'm not on my knees per se, but I'm very much bowed in prayer to him. And I'm reading off of a list. So that would be the third tip. So talk out loud, start your morning with it, keep a list. Because the easiest thing to do is when you get up in the morning to go, oh, man, what, do I, what do I pray for? What am I praying for? Like, I'm groggy. I'm out of it. And, and I got up to do what? Why am I doing this? Let like, me go I back just, to bed. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I could say a five minute prayer to God, like on the way to work. This is not a big deal. It is a big deal. Make sure you have a list because that will give you like, oh man, I got 20 things to pray for. And it's not just be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so, keep them safe, help this person with their cancer. <laughs> no, really pray over these things. Think Petition about what God. you're saying. Think yeah. about what you're saying. Please be with this person who has cancer, Father. Be with the doctors who are helping them. And, and if it be your will, please let this be gone from them and let people glorify your name because of it. Those are the things that we want to bring to God where we're not just be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so. Get creative in your prayers as well. The last thing that I would say for a tip on this is think of it like you're having a conversation with God because you are. I think that, again, the power of prayer being, you know, that you can affect things, but also that you're getting to talk to the all-powerful, almighty creator is just f absolutely phenomenal to think about. And the fact that he wants you to tell him these things. I preached the lesson just talking about, I, I referenced a second ago, I preached on Matthew 6. And in verse 8, Jesus tells his disciples, God already knows, you know, the things that you need, the things that you're asking for, he already knows. And so it's less about informing God of what you need. I mean, I think he, he wants you to bring those requests to him, but he already knows those things. It's about the relationship. It's about, are you, do you have the faith to step out and, and tell him these things? And uh, Joe, I was actually talking to your dad recently, uh, I think after the sermon actually, about, you know, sometimes he just thinks out loud and it's to God. Like, you know, God, I've been thinking about this, wondering about this. It's going to be weird and awkward the first couple of times, but man, it truly is cool to, to kind of pour out your heart to God. Yep. And so a lot of that, the last thing I'll say on this as far as tips and advice is it's going to require mental engagement. Yeah. If you're not mentally engaged in your prayers, 
they're going to be pretty fruitless and you're not going to feel like they, you know, and they're not, you're not going to feel like there was a quality prayer because it probably wasn't be mentally engaged that talk that, that speaks to the talking out loud point that speaks to the, have that list in front of you, uh, be intentional with the planning, but be mentally engaged with your prayer. Again, you're communicating with God that probably, that deserves some mental that's, engagement. That's exactly say. it. Yeah. No. Uh, and, and I kind of went off on this as, as I was teaching on the uh, 10 commandments, like be reverent when you're approaching the almighty, there's no daddy, there's no, you know, and, and when you enter into prayer, it's not like you have to be deathly afraid per se, but to your point that you just said at the end, reverence has to be demanded in this moment where it's not a willy nilly, like throwing up half flippant. No, no. You're approaching the almighty God. Take it as the blessing that it is. I was going to, I should have added this before two other quick things. Go for it. Watch some YouTube videos, you know, maybe watch a sermon or two. You don't have to see on people praying per se, but like watch some YouTube videos on prayer. There's a few preachers out there that are great. Sometimes that can really help like solidify the importance of prayer. There's a few sermons that I'm thinking of specifically that I've heard that are like, whoa, okay, you know, that's really good. There's a Francis Chan one that I heard a long time ago where he went into kind of approaching God and whatnot. And it was just such a somber, like a, such a good reminder of what we're about to do and the awe with which we should be coming before God. And he went into Isaiah 6 and he went into Revelation 4 and following. And, and so it was just, it was very good. But the second thing I'd say is maybe talk to somebody, talk to a mentor, talk to your, your parents, talk to the preacher, whatever it is. See if they have any good recommendations book-wise as well. Because I know, once again, this is difficult to do if you're not used to praying, if you're not great at praying. Having somebody who can give you a, hey, 30 days of prayer, and it gives you some ideas as to what to pray for, how to pray. or like your prayer seeing, resources. Yes, kinda, yeah. a C.S. Lewis book. He's got a great one on how to, I think it's just called How to Pray from C.S. Lewis. I think a Tozer, A.W. Tozer, he's got some stuff on prayer. So, you know, there are these books and... No, they're not Church of Christ per se. Um, so don't don't get mad at me if that's uh, a problem for you. There's some really powerful books on prayer that can help you understand how to do it. So that'd be the other tip I'd give if you really don't fully understand how to do this. But well, I want you to get us into the second thing because we talked about setting aside time for God. We talked about prayer being first and foremost when we set aside time for God. This is what we ought to do first thing in the morning, giving Him our very best, praying out loud, things like that. Second is Bible reading. And we could throw together, I guess, Bible study, but we're going to say Bible reading in this one because go back, see episode three, yeah. episode four, whatever it is, how to study your Bible, right? We did that one. But get us into the Bible reading and why this is so important. Because I, I think people, we can get tied down to, I mean, I got to gotta have a 30-minute, hour-long study every single day. I know for me right now, that's not realistic. Like, right. I, I set aside two hours every single week separately, you know, one hour here, one hour there, of kind of deep study time, and I absolutely love it. I can't do that every day. But when it comes to just spending time in God's Word every day, that's not that difficult. You think about how much time you have in a day. Yes, you yep. know, Joe and I are as busy as anybody. Everybody's always busy. You have time. You have time to spend yep. to spend time in God's Word, similar to the prayer thing. And so set time aside for this. Now, I know for me, it's actually the opposite of prayer for this one. I like to end my day hmm. reading God's Word. It's a little bit more difficult for me to, you know, a long day. I'm kind of tired mentally. It's like, okay, you got to really get engaged for prayer. My brain is not always there. Not that I'm not engaged when I'm reading, but at the same time, it is a little bit easier for me, for me personally, maybe not for you, to end my day in God's Word. And so a lot of that is just 15 minutes, 10 minutes, set aside time, just be in God's Word. Because, man, for a lot of people, that's a whole lot better than what they're doing now, yeah. which is, again, maybe during the sermon, Bible class. For most people, that's about it. And so spend time in God's Word every single day. It, draw, it, it simply draws you closer to God. You learn more about the type of man you're supposed to be. You learn more about God, his yeah. characteristics, his his traits, especially reading the Old Testament. You learn more about how the church is supposed to function. You just learn more. And Joe, I'll let you get into this next part because this is, this is to me, the, the, the most cool part about spending time with God in the Bible. Yeah, it's fun learning about God. It's fun learning about the Bible. It's fun learning about Daniel and Joseph. And the more you read and the more you start putting these things together, you go... Oh, that's very interesting. You start reading the Bible in different ways. You start looking at Joseph as like, he is a type of Christ, right? He's He is pointing toward Jesus and the salvation and coming, you know, like, and, and how he went from slavery and bondage and, and came out. And that's kind of the life of the Christian. And you look at Moses. Now we're coming out of, of Egypt as life of the Christian. And you start realizing these things. The more you read, you go, I've never noticed that before in my life. And then you read about Elijah or you read about, uh, you know. And you wouldn't have noticed it if you hadn't read it. That's exactly it. When you read... There's a lot of good stuff here. Yep. There's so many stories in the Bible that you read. No, they're not going to be in a sermon. You're probably not hearing in a Bible class, but you're going to read this and your mind is going to be absolutely blown. Like, that happened? 
That's that literally happened. When you read through the, you know, first, second Samuel, first, second Kings, first, second Chronicles, and you get into the history of it, or you're reading through Nehemiah and you're getting to see kind of them building the wall and the things they're up against. Like the Bible is such a good book and yeah. it is fun to read about these things. We miss that. We miss out on the greatest book ever written. And that's, yeah, we're saying that because we're Christians, of course. We're saying that from a literary perspective. You're talking, this spans thousands of years of history. 40 it, different authors. 40 yeah. different authors. It all comes together. There are no contradictions. Obviously, that's that's an amazing aspect. From a literary perspective, it is truly a mind-blowing book. This is better than almost anything else, literarily speaking, that you could get into um, just from a fun perspective. It's so a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it's just fun to read. Spend time in it. I think something you said that was powerful is like what you've been doing recently. Yeah, you got your, your time set aside. One psalm. One psalm in prayer time. Meditate on that psalm. You may have a six, and I don't know if this is for you if you're reading multiple or whatever, but you could take Psalm 1, six verses in Psalm 1. You could read that and then spend 15 minutes really just focusing digesting on it. Digesting it. Yeah. Digesting it, meditating on it. What is it? Because literally Psalm 1 is, less is man who meditates right on the Word of God. Um, spend some time thinking about it. What does it mean to be planted by, you know, firmly planted by streams of water? Why is that important? Why does he use this? What about the chaff being driven away? This is all just in Psalm 1. Your mind could go crazy. 15 minutes, that's all you got to give for six verses. You could do that one psalm a day and never run dry type of thing. You could, in 150 days, you restart and probably figure out something new. But I encourage you, seriously, read a lot of the Bible. It is a lot of fun. And as you said, it does draw us closer to God. So for helpful tips and advice on this one, we probably got a few. In fact, I've got one right now. It's on my brain that I did not put down. So I'll, I'll save that in a second. But as far as this one goes for helpful tips and advice, the first thing I would say because I'm not saying don't study. Please hear like studying is, is typically way more valuable than just reading. But I don't want somebody to get man. I got to do an hour study every day. I mean, so I'm trying right, to, to burn to, out. Yeah. Distinctively, you know, I'm trying to make those two distinct. I would say the first thing is plan certain hours out of your week for deep study. Don't you know feel the pressure of I got to have an hour study every day. No, plan that out. Say, man, I've got like four hours free on Thursday morning. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a good Bible study that morning, a deep Bible study. That's currently what I'm doing. Uh, again, just kind of planning out when am I going to have time because I don't have a ton of ton, ton extra of it right now. But man, it, it's it's really fantastic to to find time blocks of time where you can just study. Have your computer, yeah. have your notebook, taking notes, whatever. Having you know, and we again we've had an episode on how to study the Bible. Go back and watch that. But for the study, man, plan that out and really dive deep into that. Yeah. Uh, next, you have on here. Just start reading. Uh, I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. Just start reading. Read in Genesis one and see how far you get. Genesis is a fantastic book. And again, there are so many things in just that book alone that you're going, whoa, I, I don't know that I read that before. Um, anytime you run across a passage, and this goes number three, and then I'll let you finish number four. Uh, don't get bogged down. Mix it up if you have to. Everybody that kind of has a stereotypical, oh, once you get to Leviticus, once you get the numbers, boy. Bible reading plan goes to die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What I would say in this is ask yourself, why is this in here? God put this in here for a reason. Anytime you're reading something, why is this in here? Why does that matter? And sometimes for the long genealogies, like, but why is that in there? Notice, do you notice any names, any any particular names? So you're going to see, I think it's Genesis 10, as it's it's kind of listing out genealogies and it's listing out Nimrods and such. Whoa, well, there's some pretty big names there. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking, this is Nineveh and, and this is, you know, Babylon's coming out of this. And so you start to see with Babel, uh, with Babel of course, the Tower of Babel, you start piecing this together going, Okay, in this genealogy, if I just blew through this and was like all the way down, I can barely pronounce these names. That's ridiculous. Okay, there's like six or seven names in that alone that we see a lot later in Scripture. Yep. You'll see that a lot more. And so anytime you're looking at it, don't get bogged down. Mix it up. If you're in Leviticus, come on, this is just dry as anything. Okay, start in Matthew for a little bit. Get into it. We can come back to Leviticus, whatever it is. I'm fine mixing it up. But make sure you ask yourself, why is this in the text? That's really Everything great. has a purpose. So the last thing on here, Joe, you kind of already touched on. I would say use the yeah, Psalms. Sorry, jumped ahead. No, no, you're yeah, good. Yeah. Use the Psalms, use the Proverbs. And I even added the Gospels on here for meditation purposes, for just thinking. Like, I think about the Sermon on the Mount. Take a four-verse chunk of the Sermon on the Mount, and you could uh, think about that for hours because there's so much. It's just chock full of, of just crazy good stuff that Jesus is preaching there. I would say use those things. Again, First Samuel Probably not a lot of meditation going on. I mean, there's some there's some parts for sure. Don't get me wrong, but like when it comes to thinking about God and His character traits, and especially Jesus' teachings, use those books: Psalms, Proverbs. Uh, you could say Ecclesiastes is probably another one of those Gospels. Maybe there's a few others I'm leaving out. But when you just want to take time and think about, reflect on, meditate, use those passages. Um, again, Joe mentioned it. I kind of start my mornings a lot of times with I'll read one singular Psalm. Sometimes they're six verses. Sometimes they're 
you know, 46 verses. And then I'll use that as kind of my, kind of my prayer fuel, oddly enough of like, I look I for things, I look for things in the Psalm to, to thank God for to, as if, if it talks about God's mercy, I'll thank him for his mercy. Like just kind of stuff like that. It really helps my mind center. And so use those things is what I would say. Um, that's really kind of all I've got. Do you have any? Oh, oh, I did have one. Yeah, that I, yeah, yeah that's right. Else, yeah. Leave your phone out of the room. Mm-hmm. Leave your phone out of the room. That's something that, you know, speaking to me, uh, you know, I'm guilty of having my phone basically in my pocket all the time. Man, is it ever tempting to, oh, I got a got ding on my watch. Hmm, what was that? Oh, man, I got to check March Madness. I got to check, you know, all these things. If you want to spend time with God, just like if I want to go out to eat with my wife and I want to spend time with her, I'm I should, hopefully I'm putting my phone down at the, at the at the dinner table when we're out to eat. Hopefully I'm putting my phone down when we're having a when a conversation uh, having a good conversation. Same thing with God. When you are spending time with Him, specifically with prayer, Bible reading, Bible study, set your phone aside. This is Will's Bible. It's well worn. Please, please, please. We've talked about this before. Get yourself a hard copy Bible. Oh, for sure. Like yep. Great one. something that you can actually have highlights on. Because you go, well, my phone is my Bible. No, no, no. Leave your phone out of the room. Grab yourself an actual Bible that you flip through the pages. Will has flipped through these pages a lot, as you can tell, as well worn. There's something so cool about that. As a matter of fact, when I bought, so my Bible was kind of my um, class ring, quote unquote, because I was prized possession. Yeah, yeah, it is my most prized possession. Like I, if I ever lost that thing, I don't know what I'd do. I'd cry for days. Um, instead of getting a class ring, I was one of one. I mean, I was homeschooled, and so my mom got me a very nice Bible, calfskin leather, and everything else. And I was going to Bear Valley, and it was great. I've used that thing more than pretty much anything else in my life. It's got so many notes on my Bear Valley notes. And I did that for a reason because I want to be able to pass that down to my kids and their kids and their kids. And, and yeah, hopefully it lasts that long. I got to get it rebound. Um, there's something so cool about like, this is a legacy. This is, I have been in my word. I have been studying it. And it's not, wow, look at him. He's great. As much as it's like, this matters. Mm-hmm. This matters to, to dad. This matters to grandpa, whatever it is. By the time I end up passing it down the generations, this mattered so much that he was in it every single day, and I have a goal of mine that I will have a highlighted or or some sort of note on every page of my Bible because yeah. I've done that much study. I mean, those are the goals that I think we can set for ourselves in this. It starts with us being intentional, being, you know, prioritizing the plan for God, being consistent in setting aside these times for God, being man of prayer and being a man of Bible reading, Bible study, somebody who's willing to get in his word day after day after day. Get yourself a hard copy Bible and just make the plan to like, man, I'm going to be in this every day. I want this to be well-worn. When I pass this to my kids, it's like, that is one of the most prized possessions in the family. I get to have this. That is that is amazing. And I, I have this with my, um, with my we call him Peepaw, my great-grandfather's Bible. Like that is a relic, so to speak, in the family of, yeah, that's cool. this is really, really cool. He was a man of God. He was in his word. We get to now pass this down to future generations. You can do that, but not with a Bible on your phone that buzzes every two minutes and distracts you. Please don't do that. So just to get back to Will's point, this is a very important one. We realize that we kind of, we touched on a few of these things before, but I'm, I'm with you. I was a little shocked that we had not covered this. Yeah. Um, very, very important. As a man of God, you have to set aside time to be about God. To be a godly young man. I mean, again, to go back to how we started, your time just gets eaten up by every little thing, you know, especially when you have a family. I mean, goodness, you're taking care of the kids and I got to do this for work. And, you know, in our economy these days, you got to probably work multiple jobs, work a lot of hours, like your time just gets eaten up. And so it's like just with anything, if you don't set aside time to go to the gym, you ain't going to the gym. If you don't set aside time to, if you're into reading, which hopefully you are, episode 31, value of reading. If you don't set set time aside to read books, you're not going to read books. Exact Exact same thing here. If you want to be a godly young man, get to know God better. Spend time with him. Communicate with him. And so kind of basic stuff, but I think a lot of stuff that guys, young men specifically, aren't really doing a lot of these days. And so hopefully you've got questions, comments, feedback. Let us know. We're trying to do a much better job of responding to those comments. So if you have a question, if you have a Hey, how do you guys handle this? Or what do you think about this? We're going to respond to them. Um, so let us know. Spending time with God is one of the most important things you can plan for your day, for your week. And so I, we would encourage you to do that. We need to have an episode soon about just planning in general. Like yeah. the, the value of planning your week out. It's something me and Joe have been kind of big on lately of, of just right. really setting time aside for everything. And so, but with that, we'll save that discussion for another time. This has been episode 63, right? Of the God. Yeah, uh, 63. Yeah, 63. Yep. You're in, yep. Rolling right along. So thank you for watching listening. We'll be back next week. 